Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I am really, really excited. Most days I am excited, but today is extra exciting because I received this package. So I received a message on Instagram from a seed company, So Right Seeds. Is that not so cute? So Right Seeds. So it's S-O-W Right Seeds. They said, we would love to send you some seeds. And I was like, why? Of course, I would love for you to send me some seeds because, okay, if you know me, you know I love seeds. I love everything to do with seeds. I love winter sowing. I love seeds starting indoors. I love seeds. I just love seeds. Seriously. I need a t-shirt. I love seeds. They sent this package and I was so excited but I'm telling you, I was not prepared. When they said, we want to send you some seeds, I thought they meant like a couple packs. Y'all, are you ready for this? And listen, I want you to know, this is in no way, shape or form me bragging whatsoever. I get so excited, as you know, but you know what this means, right? This means that I had to go out I'm gonna show you seeds in a second, but I had to go out and buy two more grow lights and more trays because I had started my seeds and <laughs> we cannot wait until next year. We cannot. So, are you ready to see what they sent me? Like, I'm blown away. And can we talk about how gorgeous their seed packs are? Look at the amount of seeds. Then, I even have more in these collections. So, of course, we had to make a video. Couldn't make a video opening it. I could not wait, and I looked like a hot mess, and y'all would have been scared and probably never watched this channel again. So, let's talk about what they sent me. And listen, y'all, I really want you to seriously consider going and purchasing from So Right Seeds. They are a non-GMO heirloom seed company out of Missouri. So what I thought we would do is go over what I received and I want to give a big, huge thank you to you guys at So Right Seeds. You are amazing, awesome. I cannot wait, literally cannot wait. My husband was like, why do you have to go get more grow lights? What, what are we doing? <laughs> And I was like, because seeds, I mean, I, I've received seeds. I'm going to put on my glasses because I can't see. Um, even though I'm only 28, my eyes act like they're older. Okay. Bergamot, Monarda fistula. Indoors six to eight weeks before your last frost. Monarda, this is Monarda fistula. Fist <laughs> I said fistula. I think that's like... Uh, so my daughter's a nurse and fistula, I think is like a tumor or something, or isn't it like when your intestines are, I'm going to stop now because I really have no idea what a fistula is, but I don't think it's what's in this pack. So, <laughs> uh, okay. So it's Monarda. See what happens when I don't wear my glasses. I make up things and I say that it is Monarda fistula. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. This is Monarda fistulosa. Fistulosa, okay? Gorgeous. Calendula. This is the apricot beauty. And this is an annual. Gorgeous. I love these. I'm so excited. So, this would be six to eight weeks before my last frost. Painted daisy. Chrysanthemum coronatum. Uh, six to eight weeks before my last frost. Asta daisy. I want to grow daisies so bad, so bad. I only had one, two, one bloom last year. And I am so excited to say that they overwintered. They are gorgeous green and leafy, but no flowers yet. So I am so excited for this one. Six to eight weeks indoors. Shasta Daisy, Alaska. I'm, assume, I'm assuming you pronounce this Ori stock. So this is stock and I am giving stock another chance. And especially now that I have this picture, look how pretty that is. Six to eight weeks before my last frost. 
Ooh, I love it. Moonflower. This is one of my favorites. Let me say, because I got eaten alive on my Instagram post, Moonflower can be invasive for some of you. It is not for me. I had no problems with Moonflower. Um, so I highly recommend Moonflower. It did not re-sprout and I have none now. So I'm not sure if maybe there's another variety or somewhere in the country or the world it is invasive because it is not for me here in Central North Carolina. But do your research, okay? Do your research. Don't go off of what I say 100% all the time, <laughs> unless you're one of my children. Okay, so this is six to eight weeks before your last frost and you want to nick the outer shell uh, or you can soak them overnight to speed germination. Love, 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 love these. Okay, something I need to tell you about the moonflower. Evidently, there's psychedelic properties of the moonflower, and it says when you start doing research, you realize that um, it has psychedelic properties, and I'm not sure because as I was picking the seeds out and I was pruning it back, I didn't have any sick psychedelic episodes, so not sure what's psychedelic about it, but <laughs> again, you've been warned. I have never ever grown carnations and I have always wanted to and I know they are perennials and so I don't know about this per, this variety Shabad mix it sounds fancy though I mean look at that look they are so pretty so six to eight weeks it hits up this is one of my all-time favorite and so i will absolutely be growing this this is eight to ten weeks before your last frost or two to four weeks after your last frost outdoors corn flower polka dot mix how cute is that also known as bachelor buttons i uh, winter sowed some of these so i'm really excited about these I'm, i think i'm gonna do some winter sewing containers as well i really wanted this one I really, really, I am so excited. Isn't that beautiful? Can you imagine a green, like a lime green chartreuse zinnia? Five to seven weeks before last frost. Wow, 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 wow. Next up, flax. What a beautiful flower, who knew? Just to direct sow these, I wouldn't start these indoors. So we're gonna try that, okay? We're gonna try and direct sow these. Oh, hollyhock. These are the pink. Look at how pretty those are. Wow. They are elegant. They are six foot spikes of single cup shaped pink blooms. We're going to start these six to eight weeks before transplanting. This is one of my most favorite flowers ever. Cosmos. The pictures, I'm telling you guys, the pictures are insane. Uh, so this is an annual and you want to start at three to four weeks before your last frost. Black Eyed Susan. So here we have Rudbeckia herta, Black Eyed Susan. Look how gorgeous that flower is. I mean, it just makes you happy, doesn't it? It makes me happy. They have the Mexican sunflower, Tithonia. So right seeds, you know where it's at. Oh, I forgot to say. So these, you start indoors six to eight weeks before last frost or so directly outside in prepared soil. Light is required. Let's get back to this nest, gorgeousness. Okay, so start indoors under grow lights five to six weeks before transplanting. And I uh, love these. It says five to seven feet in height and mine get about 15 feet tall. Morning glory. I am growing some morning glory to plant. I'm thinking along my fence. And this one is absolutely beautiful. Heavenly blue with a name like that, you just have to get excited, right? So start seeds indoor six to eight weeks before transplanting. And these have the hard seeds uh, shells. So we're gonna nick those, but they get to be 15 feet. Woo, that's a big one. So, so six to eight weeks. Monarda Citradora, lemon mint. Monarda Citra, it's another bee balm, showy perennial that attracts hummingbirds, bees, and butterflies to the summer garden. Doesn't that sound dreamy? Start eight to 10 weeks before transplanting outside. Here is some blue sage salvia, Farinacea. That sounds fancy, Farinacea. 
Sounds like a wine. We need to start 10 weeks before our last frost. How beautiful is that? Yarrow. I wanted yarrow so bad. I know you think I'm making this up and I wanted to have white flowers. Just last night I was out taking pictures of my, I have a viburnum and it is spectacular right now and I was outside at night and it just lit up the driveway. And so I was thinking I really want to do a video on white flowers because they are really spectacular in the night. So doing like a nighttime planting. Yarrow, white yarrow. Have you ever seen so, something so beautiful? So I only have one yarrow and it's like a pinky, orangey, hot pink, really pretty, like mauvey. This, this is where it's at. Okay, so it says direct seed outdoors in the fall or cold stratify seeds prior to starting indoors. So I'm going to need to go put these in the freezer. Valerian. Valerian. I've heard about Valerian root. I think it's for bad attitudes. <laughs> I don't know, but I think I've read it's like it helps with your mental stability or something. I could be totally making that up right now. And I should probably do my research before I say these things on this YouTube channel. But if I'm wrong, please forgive me. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm wrong. So Valerian uh, let's see, Valeriana officinalis. Love that. Cold stratification. So we need to put this in the freezer as well. And this gets to be three to five feet with vanilla scented clusters of flowers. <gasps> yes, honey. I love that. Okay. So sow the seeds directly outdoors in fall for natural overwintering or refrigerate them for two weeks before sowing indoors in late winter. Cover seeds lightly with soil. Okay, so we're, even though, I want to stop and say, even though I am past the point and we're beyond late winter, that doesn't mean I am not going to continue to do this. It just means that I'm going to be a little bit later planting it out in my garden, which is completely fine with me. So valerian is one that is absolutely going in my garden, especially if it gives me an attitude adjustment. My husband will be so grateful. So we're going to put that to the side because we have to refrigerate, okay? Coleus rainbow mix, the picture. Again, with the picture. I love coleus. I love coleus rainbow mix. And this says it's a stunning perennial. Um, it did not stay for me. As soon as we got a frost, it died. So I'm not thinking it's going to be a perennial in my zone, which is 8A. Uh, 7B to 8A. So it says sow indoors 8 to 10 weeks before last frost. Gorgeous. My favorite Dahlia Dwarf Single Mix. So these are, these are going to stay short and sassy. And I love that. I love, love, love. So this says start indoors or, or sow directly outdoors after danger of frost. Basil Opal. Look at how beautiful that is. It's like black deep purple leaves with some green variegation and pink flowers will make a nice show of color in the garden. Flavor is more mellow compared to other basils. Leaves make an unusually beautiful and tasty pesto. <gasps> I love pesto. So look at how gorgeous this is. This is called Gay Feather Liatris Spicata. Gorgeous. I have, I have never ever planted this. I've never even heard of it and it is going in my garden and I cannot wait. Four foot tall spikes. Are you kidding me? Purple flower head that bloom from the top creating a feathery effect. Attracts native bees, hummingbirds, and butterflies. It's also known as the blazing star and it is a perennial American wildflower native to meadows and marshes. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And you can kind of see where it started to bloom and, and it hasn't quite opened up. Zinnias. Thumbelina, adorable dwarf zinnia with double and semi-double blooms in a rainbow of colors. Growing only 10 to 15 inches in height. So one to two feet. So it's going to be a cute little thing. Is perfect for containers, beds, and borders. Bees and butterflies love to visit these compact zinnias. You want to start these five to seven weeks before your last frost, or you can 
direct sew. Another Zinnia Cactus Blend. These are awesome. You guys, I grew these last year and they just I don't know how to describe them. They are so beautiful. So these five to seven weeks, again, if you want earlier blooms, rolled petals rather than flat, and they come in a mix of pink, red, white, yellow, purple, and salmon. Gorgeous. Coral beauty, look at that color. I am so excited about this because I am doing an all orange and blue section for my husband's football team. And I shouldn't say it's just my husband because it's my football team. I love them as much as he does. Uh, and that is where we spend our entire life is at that football field and with those guys. So this is perfection. It's going in the orange and look at it. It's almost iridescent looking. So same as the other ones. Just when you thought it was over, guess what? There's more. Now you see why I had to get another grow light because I have so many plants. I I, I just kind of want to throw my other ones out the window. So they sent me two collections. They sent me an annual flower collection. Let's see what's inside. The China Aster Powder Puff. How beautiful is that? In these six to eight weeks. Cosmos Candy Stripe. How beautiful is that? Can you see it? So the white in this, I feel like would be really beautiful at night. And the hot pink just gives like pizzazz to it. Three to four weeks. Cracker Jack, Marigold, and look at what color it is. It's orange and it's going in my orange bed and it is gorgeous. I hated Marigolds last year until the Mission Marigold. And now I love Marigolds, listen to me. How beautiful is Cracker Jack? Four to six weeks. Zinnia California Giant. To start these the same five to seven weeks before if you want earlier blooms or you can direct sow them. The last one I've never grown before, Cape Daisy. Osteospermum Eclanus. Start seeds indoors six to eight weeks in advance or sow outdoors after all danger of frost. Look at how beautiful. That covers the annual flower collection. Next up, cottage collection. Now, last year I grew an entire cottage garden from seed and I am so excited about the cottage collection. They have many different collections. This one is quite amazing. Coming in at number one, Snapdragon. So this is the Tetra Mix. You're going to start indoors six to eight weeks. English Daisy. Who knew there was so many daisies and I love it. I am here for it. So this is, this is a European native. Six to eight weeks before your last frost. English Daisy. Look how beautiful those are. Oh my gosh. They don't even look real. Looks like Chanel. Chanel not Chanel, Chanel. So these like part shade. Cosmo Sensation Mix. I grew these last year and they were spectacular and I actually didn't have any to grow this year. Here we go. I'm so excited. Okay, three to four weeks before last frost for early blooms and this is going to get three to five feet tall. Zinnia Polar Bear. It's white. This is going, do you see the vibe? I'm feeling this white garden. My favorite pansies. I am going to save these for the fall. Uh, these are absolutely, this is amazing. I have always wanted to grow pansies. I am so excited to say that now I will be trying pansies for the very first time. Never done that before. So pansies, you would want to direct sow outside in autumn or early spring, or for best results, start inside after cold stratifying. Bellflower. So bellflower tussock, tussock. Okay, so this is a bell-shaped flower that attracts pollinators eight to 10 weeks before your last frost. Can you believe all of these seeds? This is insane. Columbine, I've never grown before. That's McKenna Giants Mix. Never, ever have I grown these before. Um, six to eight weeks before your last frost. That is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Phlox Pastel Shades Mix. So six to eight weeks before your last frost. Sweet Pea, the Mammoth Mix. 
six to eight weeks before the last frost and we're gonna soak these seeds. Sweet alyssum carpet of snow and six to eight weeks and they may be grown indoors if there is sufficient light. How cool is that? But this is a white flower. I'm gonna do a white flower bed. <gasps> I'm so excited. I, I love violas. I love them. So Johnny Jump Up. These are what you plant with pansies. So Johnny Jump Up is, these are Helen Mount. And this is something I have always wanted to try and never have. So here we are. I'm so excited. Okay, and the very last one is Lupine or Lupin Russell, four to six weeks. These, I wonder, so I know there's an annual and there's a perennial and there's one that blooms the first year and there's another that blooms the second year. So I'm not sure what Russell is, but I will be doing my research. These all came in the cottage collection. These are absolutely amazing, amazing selections for a cottage garden. What do you think? So if you are looking to start a cottage garden, this cottage collection would be all you needed, really. And it could carry you into the fall as well if you are in a sort of a medium climate, which, or zone, which mine is, I am in zone 7B, 8A. So, I want to say one more time, thank you so much, So Right Seeds. What do you think? We are ready to sow some seeds. Let's go do this. I want to thank you so much for watching this video, though. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Go out, get your hands dirty. Go plan your garden, play in your garden. And by all means, check out So Right Seeds. Order you some seeds and let's get growing. So, if you you didn't know I am offering a seed starting course that I put together. It is so in depth. And if you are interested in taking it, I will be sharing that course. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. Go out, get your hands dirty. Have the best day ever. Take care.